In early July, 25-year-old Brian Isiko, a student of YMCA in Jinja, was sent to jail for harassing Kabarole woman MP Sylvia Rabuogo. He was convicted on his own plea of guilty to charges of cyber harassment and offensive communication. The case generated interest from the public with some saying the MP had overreacted to a situation in which someone was expressing his feelings towards her. It also raised debate on sexual harassment and violation of rights. But one needs to know the facts about sexual harassment in order to sympathize or criticize the subjects. Professor Sylvia Tamale of Makere University describes sexual harassment as bullying. When someone bullies you, someone um, persistently makes unwanted sexual advances or sexual requests, and the key word here is unwanted. She also outlines its manifestations. Typically, it happens in schools, in, uh, um, institutions of learning. Um, it also happens at the workplace. It's within society, especially on the streets, in the, in, in the open. Tamale explains that sexual harassment is of two main types, which include quid pro quo harassment, which occurs in the workplace and involves something for something demands. For example, a boss asking um, his or her subordinate, you know, employee, for sexual favors, again unwanted, unsolicited, in return for a promotion. The other form is environmental sexual harassment. You know, it could be, you know, people putting up posters that are very suggestive. Tamale explains that sexual harassment is considered an abuse of power and someone at a lower level of the power ranks will never harass one at a higher level. A secretary trying to come on to the boss, all the boss has to say is, stop it. Now, you try to reverse the situation, uh, uh, the boss coming on to the secretary or the lecturer coming on to the student. The person in, the, in those two cases who is in a subordinate position has no power, has no authority to say no, stop it. They are scared, on the contrary, they are scared they, because they know the consequences. In line with Professor Tamale's explanation, women activists explain how they have been subjected to sexual harassment. Sometimes you're seated next to a church goer, and then you know when the priest says it's time for that handshake of peace be with you, someone is scratching the mid of your hand. So you're like, what's wrong with this guy? When people are going for Holy Communion, they are taking their offertory at the front, some Men take advantage of that and want to rub their crotch against the woman behind or push forward so that, you know, they can, food, they can feel her boobs. So, which is really very disturbing that this is a religious place where you feel you want to unwind and talk to your God. They would like that people are sensitized more about sexual harassment. Especially men, they have, I don't know where they get it from, they think they're entitled to women's bodies. And that's why they don't respect a woman's body. As soon as they see them, they want to touch. They don't have to touch. Don't touch. However, the men argue that they also encounter harassment. They also believe that some women are harassed because of the way they conduct themselves. The border border men have a story to tell. Women are sexually harassing them day and night. Day and night. The way they sit, what they speak. Much as the Constitution talks about the right to human dignity, Tamale says specific laws, unfortunately, do not address the matter of sexual harassment. She says that only the Employment Act tries to address the vice, but is also lacking. Sexual harassment can only be um, committed by an employer or an agent of the employer. Now, what does that mean? It means that if you and I are workmates, we work together at the same level, and you harass me, you are not committing sexual harassment under the Employment Act. I, I think that is ridiculous. 
The other limitation of the Employment Act has to do with the number of employees an organization should have before it is a must for it to have a sexual harassment policy in place. All institutions, organizations must have a sexual harassment policy if they have more 25 employees or more. So in other words, um, small companies with less than 25 people um, are not required under that law to have a policy on sexual harassment. 